now we're getting ready for the opening face-off. The referee is Joseph Kampala. Each team will not, and, uh, well, I'll get an opportunity later to tell you how they're going to select the officials. But very briefly, a team uh, out of this school will nominate two. The other team will then pick one of those two. The linesmen are Sergei Gusev of Russia and Jim LeBlanc of Canada. Joseph Kampala of West Germany. Uh, going to center race right, will be number 14 for Canada. Ralph Baxter with Frank Mahavlich on the left wing. Gordy Howe, number nine, on the right wing. And for Russia, Vladimir Petrov, number 16, will go to center. Valery Harmalov on left wing. And Boris Mihailov on the right side. The puck is dropped down. The 1974 competition is underway. Now it's Kusev leading that play up to the... An ADM blue line with Whitey Stapleton to Mahavalov. Mahavalov out the center right to Gordy Howe. Howe back to Baxter, back to Howe. Over that line, moving right in. And it's loose in front of the net. Here's it back to the blue line and the shot goes wide. Alexander Gusev trying to take it outside his own zone, fed a long pass. Back out to it is Ralph Baxter. Baxter looking for the right side pass to Gordy Howe. And Howe is moving right in there. He's showing them that he's gone. Uh, back to J.C. Trombley, shoots! The Chiefs are front of the net, they bang at it! And that's was hit up by Trechak. As the Canadians come up and open up, wide open by playing deep inside the Soviet zone, something that they had planned not to do. Back to J.C. Trombley as the Canadians are changing on the fly. They're playing with four lines and they're going to be changing frequently. Here's Lacroix losing the puck at center right. Back on the right side to Harlamov. He's looking for Mikhailov. Mikhailov, number 13, he's bumped in there by Lacroix. He loses the puck and is taken by number 27, Frank Mahavlich. Whitey Stapleton dumps him. Going in over the line is Mahavlich fighting for it. And back comes uh, Mikhailov at center ice, number 13. But Bobby, Johnny McKenzie is out there with Lacroix. Bobby Hull comes out out of the ice. The Canadians are all bunching on the near side. Here's a pass. Over to Paul Schmier. Schmier to Bobby Hall. All over the line. He hit and goes through. What a fast, wide open opening this game has had. It's back to the blue line and it's intercepted by 15 Yakishev. The Chadron, the Maltzev. Over the line, he got the Chadron, takes it. And he was called outside and the Canadian blue line. Well, Howie, I thought they were going to open this up and play man for man checking to see what the, to feel each other out. But they've done everything but that. I was kind of surprised. I saw Stapleton leave his defensive position and make a rush on the far side, leaving his side open. But the key is they're sending one man in, and the wings are picking up the wing. Now it's number five, Kapustin. Stopped there by Jerry Cheevers to Bobby Hall around the board. He gives it to Johnny McKenzie. McKenzie's pass intended for Lacroix goes too far, and it goes all the way down the ice, and it's called back to right there. Two minutes gone in the 1974 series. What we're looking for here with Andre Lacroix, number seven, he'll be looking to dump that left wing pass to Bobby Hull. Hull will be winding up at his own zone, and they're looking to give Hull that big break down the left side and hope that he can get advantage of that tremendous shot he has. Shadron and Lacroix. Lacroix gets the draw. Now they scramble for it under the legs, and it's taken by Paul Schmier. Here, around the back of the Canadian net. Mir is known as a hitter, but he's been told not to hit too often in this game. He's being checked very close, though. Throws it up there to Bobby Hull. He loses it, and Hull goes back for it. Bobby Hull turns. He's tied up by Yakishev. And Paul Schmier goes in to help him out. The puck is loose inside the Canadian zone. They try to come out the short side. There's a shot. It's blocked. Here comes Bobby Hull down the left wing, and he's tied up and pulled down. And the play is whistled dead. There's a Paul Schmier reacting to a Russian player. And you're going to see some of that, even though Billy Harris says the perfect scheme would try to play for no penalties in eight games and eliminate the Russian power play. And Easton, number 22, with Bob Knopf, 24, in the left wing. For Canada, it's the French selection line with Bernier at center, with Ray G. Newell. And Mark Tardif on the forward line. Whitey Stapleton and J.C. Trombley on the defense. Here comes Whitey Stapleton. Up to his own line, the pass intended over there for Mark Tardif went too far. It's held inside, and there's a tremendous body takes it right in in front. They bang it, the loose puck. Levy 
Medvedev took a tremendous body check. Look at this. Great save by Trichek, and he also got the rebound. Serge Bernier is centered, gets the draw. It's brought back out to the line, out to center, by it's bought down number 24. A long, bouncing shot comes out on the open side. Out in front of the net, here it is, Lachenko. Lachenko, the shot is blocked. Goalkeeper Jerry Cheever's got a skate on it. Now with Jerry Lebedev, number 11, intercepted by 21 Bernier. Around the back of the net to J.C. Tremblay. Tremblay. Ahead to Regine Hull. And it's intercepted. And Easton, number 22, over the Canadian line. He has to stick handle with it, puts it right out in front, and back after it is number 12, Konstantin Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov, number 12, to Anisin. Anisin takes a look. Stapleton ties him up. And it's intercepted by Bernier. Four minutes gone in the opening period. There's no score. Bernier down the right side, breaks between two players and then throws a blind pass. Here comes Paul Henderson. Henderson came out off the boards as they're changing on the fly. Luchenko, number three, on the right side, back out to center ice to Harlamov. Harlamov going in over the line, his pass was too far. Puts it right back out in front again, back to Gusev. Gusev shot, blocked and thrown in there. With Jerry Cheevers down. Vasiliev to Mikhailov. Mikhailov is tied up now by Stapleton. There's a loose puck in front of the net. And it's taken by J.C. Tremblay. Tremblay to Henderson. Henderson's long shot. And Kretschak turns it aside. They reach right in. And uh, Bruce McGregor just missed as he had the goalkeeper out of position. Now it's Mike Walton up there at center with McGregor parked in front of the net. Right on in front again. And Walton couldn't turn back for it. Walton leading scorer in the WHA. Throws it back over on the wing. It's picked up by Petrov, number 16. The Russians are being forced back inside their own zone. Ahead up in the left wing to Harlamov. The pass bounced off his stick. Number six is Brad Selwood. Put it on the stick of Gusev. Now it's Mike Walton winding up. Walton to Selwood behind their own goal. And the team Canada's taking it very cautiously inside their own zone. They don't want to make any mistakes back there. Here comes Ricky Lee up there with McGregor. McGregor over the line to Walton. Walton going in offside. Paul Henderson was a half a step ahead of the play. Now Canada, when they're close to the puck, are taking the man, but the problem is the, the Canadian in their own end, furthest from the puck, is leaving the play and running ahead. And if the Russians pick it off, we're going to be in trouble. The only time we've been in trouble so far, Johnny, is when the Canadian hasn't picked up his man. Shadron, number 19, against Ralph Baxter for the faceoff. Smear, shot, blocked. Shadron takes it. Head to Maltzev. Maltzev, and he's blocked by Smear. It goes into the corner. Great recovery by Paul Smear, as it's Rick Smith, number 17, deep inside Canadian territory, loses it, and it's picked off by Smith, who came back into position. Back out to the blue line, Sigenkov. Sigenkov throws a rink-wide pass. It's taken by Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe turns. He's dumped. Taken by Shadron. Over to Yakushev, and Yakushev takes a shot from Gordy Howe. Here comes Frank Mahovlich. Mahovlich is bumped in there by number five, Lyapkin. Wide open hockey game as Maltsev goes down to the Canadian blue line. Gordy Howe's over there to tie him up, and he flips it out to center right. That goes over the red line, but they had a chance to make a play on it. And it's out to center right to Yakushev. Yakushev turns. Wheels the pass to Shadron. Shadron going a long pass intended for Maltsev. Maltsev trying to tie up Rick Smith. Shadron is bumped in there by Backstrom in the corner. They have a man loose in front of the net, but Schmier is really banging at him. And Jerry Cheevers has to come out to grab the loose punt. No score, 13-24, remaining in the opening period. score Canada nothing and the Soviets nothing this game num game number one is from Quebec City from the face off the play goes right over the bottom off inside the Canadian zone it's back out to the blue line back out to Luchenko Luchenko shot is blocked and is taken over here by Johnny McKenzie off the boards out to center right Bobby Hall is circling over to center to make the check on Badenov 
And Andre Lacroix goes over to pick up Hull's wing. Out to center. Bond knob 24. To the blue line to Lebedev. Lebedev back to Luchenko. He shoots in this line. Another shot that bounces over his stick. Back out to the line. It's an Easton. And Easton keeping it in. Here's Whitey Sables in the Bobby Hall. Bobby Hall at center. They're changing players on the move. Hull over the line. Couldn't get his shot away. Trying to put it in front of the net with number 21, Serge Bernier. Couldn't get into position. Both teams are changing on the fly. And Eason. Took a bit of a stick check there from Regine Houle. And back comes number 21, Serge Bernier. Bernier at center. Caught from behind by Harlamov, number 17. Harlamov, two on two. Back to the blue line. And Petrov, he shoots. Oh, and a great save by Jerry Cheevers as he went to the top left-hand corner. Some very amazing things are happening here, and it's Lacrosse checking and McKenzie checking, but the three Russians are breaking away here in this position because the Canadians went in three abreast. And watch this great shot and a great save. Goalkeeper needs a couple of big ones early in the game to really give him the confidence he needs, and Jerry Chevers has made a couple of good ones. Now it's Petrov on the faceoff, loses it to Serge Bernier with Brad Selwood behind his own net, number six. Brad Selwood ahead to Ray Jean Hull. Hull back to a corner, and it's Ricky Lee taking a look. The Russians are sending two men in deep as Hull goes around the back of his own net. Earl is hockey game. Lee comes over to Selwood. Selwood trying to dump it out, and the Canadians are having trouble getting it out of there. Finally, it's put to the blue line, but not out as Vasiliev kept it in. Here comes Mark Tardif. And he sidestepped the body check from Vasiliev. Vasiliev is a good body checker. Now there's a bump with Bernier and Mihailov, number 13, the captain of the Soviets. 11 minutes remaining in the first period. No score. Offside at center ice. Now we have Brad Selwood, number 6, and number 16, Vladimir Petrov, raving their sticks at each other. Mike Walton coming out on the ice for Canada. Play center, Walton, who who are 57 goals and 60 assists for 117 points to win the WHA championship this past season. Now, Paul Smear rushes in, takes a poke at the puck, and then hurries back to his position. At the line, it's a pass on the right side to Bruce McGregor. McGregor, oh, it's passed. The Henderson was just a half stride too far ahead. Back comes the Soviets, led by Yakushev. Yakushev with Shadrin. He goes into the corner. He is tied up and is taken over there by number 17, Rick Smith. They leave it at the line. Paul Henderson's long shot is wide. Rutschak turns it back at the net. There's Henderson in throwing a body check. Number 19, Vladimir Shadrin. Number 19 on the right side for the Soviets. He stopped it inside the Canadian line. The puck comes out. Taken by McGregor. It's a two-on-one break. McGregor with Paul Henderson. Henderson going in with McGregor. Oh! And the puck bounced right over the top of his stick and a beautiful passing play. Here it is. Back to Yakushev. Yakushev, two-on-two. It's Maltsev. Maltsev. That's a long shot go, but that hit the stick of Rick Smith. Jerry Peters grabbed it to hold on. Hot night, just like it was two years ago in the Montreal Forum, when the Soviets opened with that 7-3 win. But they didn't know what to expect that time. Team 74 knew what to expect when they met Team 74 from the Soviet side. Now J.C. Trombley, who's got great moves. Up the puck out to center ice. Long pass to uh, Luchenko. Luchenko cutting in with the Sin Anderson. Anderson trying to lay it out in front. He shoots. Oh, and a great save by Jerry Cheevers. Back out to the front of the net. It's Bodnov. Bodnov to Anison. And that's intercepted by Whitey Stapleton. He leaves the pass for J.C. Tremblay. Tremblay picking up to the line. The pass over there to Ralph Faction. But he's called offside. Ralph Backstrom. who at 37 years of age 
playing like he's about 25 or 26 rather than 37. But he, I think, has been one of the outstanding players in the training camp for Team Canada so far. Now Gordy Howe is out there on the right side with J.C. Trombley carrying the puck. Backstrom with him. Backstrom, oh, and he took that pass and couldn't hold it. Back come the Soviets, led by Lebedev, number 11. Lebedev, the pass over to Luchenko. Luchenko, long shot, shot it wide, looking for his own rebound, but it's taken by Gordy Howe. Here's Howe. Passes over on the wing and dumps it out to center ice. And the Canadians are changing on the fly. Andre Lacroix. Try to check. Number 12. Konstantin Kuznetsov finally does. Passes back out to center right for Lacroix. Lacroix with Howe on the wing. Pass over the right side to Mahavlich. Oh! Shot, a weak shot, went wider than that. Howe trying to keep it in. Mahavlich comes over to do the back checking. Look at this. And here's Howe dumping it into Lacroix. Back over to Brad Selwood. Selwood to Mahavlich. Mahavlich racing in the corner. Howe goes off and Johnny McKenzie comes on. McKenzie throws a body check in the corner. Puck comes out to Mihailov at center race now. Bobby Hall is out there. Harlamov. Harlamov is overskated and the puck slides to the corner. Good back checking by uh, Johnny McKenzie. He's, he ties up Gustav. Gustav then breaks away. And Jerry Cheevers takes a slash at Mihailov, who is standing in front of the net. Here's a pass. Over to Bobby Hall. Hall couldn't get a stick on it. Hall overskated it. Tries to hold on. The puck hits the side of the net. And he looks for the bag. Oh! Johnny McKenzie. From Andre Seven seconds remaining in the opening period, and Canada has opened the scoring. With the score, Canada won. Soviet nothing. This is game one from Quebec City. Serge Bernier goes to center ice now as Canada leads one to nothing. And the long shot will be now back for icing. Interesting to note on a new computer we're using that in the checking system, Gordy Howe has had to make two checks, has got 99% of it. A computer that's going to tell us the time on the ice, the number of checks made, the misses, the goals, assists, the times, and a number of things. And right, right so far, Gordy Howe is batting 99% in the checking department. Here comes Serge Bernier with Hool up on the right side. And Mark Tardif goes in over that line, puts it up front! And Serge Bernier had a rolling puck that he couldn't shoot. Back out front now to Regine Hu. Who getting it front, he shoots! Back in the goal goes Tardif, back to the blue line. And there's a race for it with Rick Smith, the old Boston Bruin, back to the line. And over on the left wing to Paul Schmier, and he overskates it. This is Maltsev, Maltsev, taken by Hu. Hu with Bernier, two on two. Up over that Soviet blue line. Looking for a hole in front of the net. He shoots! Oh! He split it right by the goal post. Oh, a beautiful play by Regine Hull. Now they're really starting to hit down there. Back to the blue line to Tardis. Tardis to Rick Smith. He shoots! Cutjack save. Out of the corner again. This time it's Regine Hull fighting for it with the uh, will come outside the Soviet blue line. Serge Bernier. 27-year-old Serge Bernier. Check, watch the checking here behind the net. 
And it's amazing how the Canadian players are walking around the Russian players. Just a goal missed right there. Now look at this. It's going to be quite a, I would think, a violent, tough-checking hockey game. Back to the blue line. Whitey Stapleton shoots it deflected right over the top of the net. And a great chance there for Stapleton because Tuchak was blocked on the shot. Now come the Soviets inside their own line. Led by Kuznetsov, number 12. They head to uh, Bodnov. Bodnov. Back to Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov. Up over the line, a long, weak shot. Turned aside by Cheevers. Around the back of the net to J.C. Tremblay. Tremblay has trouble controlling it as Bodnov takes it away from him. They have a man loose in front of the goal. Back to Luchenko. And Luchenko's shot hit an ankle. This is Lebedev. Lebedev gets away from Tremblay. Stapleton knocks the puck off of his stick. And then Stapleton goes in to tie him up in the corner. Whitey Stapleton around the boards and out to center right. Back over the blue line. It's offside. Chris McGregor was in and out. McGregor out there with Mike Walton. And with Paul Henderson on the left wing. There's Billy Harris. He's had so much international experience. And so far, it's certainly paying off. What a job he's done with this club. I think Billy Harris has got to the Canadian players to bring them back in front of the net. They're giving the Russians a corner and flooding the middle of the ice, and it's going to be pretty tough for the Russians to get a shot away going through the center with three red jerseys plugged in there. All right, now it's Ralph Baxter's line out there with Frank Mahovlich and Gordy Howe. The puck is cleared to the line, but not out. Dangerously close back of his own net there was Ricky Lee. He finally does lose the puck. Has to go back and fight for it. And Gordy Howe takes it. Howe loses it. Back out to Howe. To Mahavlich. Mahavlich with Howe. Two men back. He goes around one. Trying to get set. But he had a rolling puck that he couldn't control. Right the oh. And Ralph Baxter missed as he had the goalkeeper cut Jack out of position. Now it's Harlemov. Harlemov. Around in front of the net. They shoot. And it's picked off by Gordy Howe. Howe to Mahavlich. Mahavlich at center right. Mahavlich is checked. And the Soviets take over again. And the Soviets are throwing that puck out to center right. Something we haven't seen them do too often. This is Gordy Howe being checked. Over to Harlamov. Harlamov shoots. The puck is bouncing in midair. And it's taken there now by... Oh, the goalkeeper, Jerry Cheevers, was well out of the net. Gordy Howe is on top of one player. Mahalov holds him down. And he was doing... Now watch the goalkeeper, Jerry Cheevers, knock Mahalov away from the front of that net. There's Harlemov with Mahalov. Here's Andy Lacroix. Lacroix, he's hit hard at center right by Basiliad. Here goes the shot there by Selwood. Oh, by Ricky Lee, and it went wider than that. Back comes Basiliad, number six, and both teams are changing on the fly. A 1-0 hockey game with four minutes remaining in Canada leading. And there's a good body check goes into the corner. The puck goes into the crowd. That was Ricky Lee. It's got to be just tremendous hockey, Johnny. It's great bodily contact hockey. And what's encouraging, all the Canadian players are finishing the check now. They're coming back deep in their own zone. And we're sneaking the odd fella around the defenseman. The Gankov missed the check and Vasilya missed the check. So if our fellas can stay wide and go around them, it's going to be lots of action. It's a uh, strap loose on uh, goalie Jerry Cheever's pad, but he is now... Called referee Kampala over and he allows him to fix it. The linesman is Sergei Kusev from Russia and Jim LeBlanc from Canada. Now we're having a change with uh, Serge Bernier going off and Andre Lacroix comes on with Johnny McKenzie and Bobby Hull. Shadron gets the draw back to the blue line but it hopped over the stick of Sigenkov and he uh, goes back to center for it. This is Rick Smith. Rick Smith couldn't make a play. Paul Schmier. Schmier, number 18, working his right in center. And he lost control of it. Back comes Maltev. Maltev going and he shoots. Oh, well, they went wide. He tried to play for the short side as Bobby Hull takes it. Hull fights for it. And the puck is bouncing high in the air. Goes deep into Soviet territory. Back to the line. Schmier can't hold it in. Has to wait for them to get onside. And Bobby Hull takes Shadron out of the play. Over to the crowd. Back over to Bobby Hull. He shoots. Oh, and he just got a half a second late on that slap shot. But that's the play I was telling you about earlier. They're looking for Lacroix to feed that little left wing pass to Hull. Well, if he can get it to him often enough, he doesn't draw back too far. Right here. Well, listen, we got into trouble here because the 
Canadian team gets the puck, and when we run three or four ahead of the play, then the Russians are going to take it off of us, and it's going to be two on one and three on two, and we're in trouble. As long as we play defensive hockey, Johnny, completely take the man at every opportunity, and don't get, we, we're not going to get six goals. So the key here is keep them out of our net first, and then we'll get them up the other end. Bernier shoots from the faceoff, and it just goes wide of the net. Bernier gets the rebound, lays it out in front again, and Mark Tardif couldn't get his shot. I'll tell you, these referees are letting more go than I thought they would, particularly Kampala. Now is J.C. Tremblay. Good playmaker, but he put that one right out of the stick of an opposing player is Luchenko. Luchenko over on the left wing to number 22, Anissa, and Anissa's shot is well off the mark. Tardif. Lose it to Bodnoff. It's intercepted off the boards and racing after it is Bernier. But Bernier was too well tied up by number 12, Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov, he's hit by Mark Tardif. Tardif gave him a bit of an elbow along the way. Here's Lebedev. Lebedev back to Anisin in front of that goal. And Whitey Stapleton covers up beautifully. Well, this is two minutes and 33 seconds left and there's a look at the Soviet bench that averages 24 and a half years of age. They have the 17 best players from the 72 team and they've added 10 new ones from Coach Kulagin's team, the Wings of the Soviet, which finally won the, uh, the, their National A Championship this year. A shot from the blue line is well wide of the mark. It goes out to center ice. And there's a long pass over on the wing to Mike Walton, but that puck is bouncing. He has to wait for it to settle down. Paul Henderson threw that pass, but he threw it while he was down on one leg. Now the play comes out to the front of that Soviet net. Walton trying to come back. It's taken at the blue line by Ricky Lee. Lee with Walton. Walton takes that pass over on the left wing, looking for the drop pass to Henderson. He shoots. Oh, and Jack made the save. Canadians are not just shooting blind, they're looking for the play and making the play inside the Soviet zone. Back out to the blue line. Over to Bodnov. Bodnov, number 24. There is poke checked out of the play and is taken now at center right by Brad Selwood with Bruce McGregor. McGregor, drop pass here for Walton. Walton wasn't quite ready. Now Henderson throws a body check that hurts. Back on that left wing is Harlemov, but it bounced over the top of his stick and it goes inside. Deep inside Canadian territory, out in front, hopped over Vasiliev's stick. We have a minute 25 left in this first period, and this is Paul Henderson with Harlamov, and Ricky Lee takes a run at Harlamov and knocks him down. Out at center, taken by Petrov. Petrov over on the wing to Mihailov. Mihailov with the big defenseman Alexander Gusev. Gusev goes in, the shot is blocked, and it's Backstrom clearing the center. There's two seconds left in the first period. Canada leading one to nothing. A long pass over there to Harlamov. Harlamov at center. Paul Schmier intending the pass for Backstrom was well off the target. And it's picked off by Gusev. Gusev. It was stopped there by Gordy Howe. And it's Harlamov has to go in. Backstrom is there, almost picked it off. And it's back inside Soviet territory. Backstrom steps into him, gets the puck, trying to get that pass in front. Oh, they bang at it. And they've got Backstrom tied up completely, but there's no whistle on the play. Now it comes back to a long, bouncy shot off the board. That's loose in front of the net. That is Jerry Cheevers who finally sits on it. As Marlamov is banging away at a rolling puck. Johnny, as long as this continues to happen, one Canadian, and you see how the Canadians have picked up the puck? They've picked up their wings, we get the puck, and here we get a real good scoring chance from it. As long as we send just one man in, the wings pick up the wings and come back with the Russian wings, our defense can stand up and in the mean, get a hold of that puck, and we'll go all right the other way. Interesting note off our computer that uh, Ralph Backstrom has had six face-offs, and he has won uh, five of them. Here comes Johnny McKenzie at center ice. Looking for that rink wide pass to Lacroix. And it's picked off by the Soviets. Yakushev. Yakushev with five seconds. Playing it over the line. Hit by Bobby Hull. He's knocked down. Play goes to the corner. And the buzzer sounds to end the first period. And what an opening period of hockey this has been. 
Canada opened on top. They did, they did it by forechecking early. They completely tied up the Soviets. And as a result, they settled down. They gained a lot of confidence. And Billy Harris, by changing his lines every 40 to 50 seconds, kept them fresh. And so at the end of the first period, with the score, Canada won. The Soviets nothing. This is game one from Quebec City. We have had uh, a lot of speculation, of course, as to the outcome of these games with the uh, Team Canada 74 and the, the Soviet team. Uh, there was a lot of speculation because of the fact that Canada's team is averaging 39, or at least not averaging 39, averaging 29 years of age, but have players ranging all the way from 23 to the age of uh, 46, and you know who that is. I asked Goy today how it was for young Mark and Marty not to be selected for this first game and he said well it's always disappointing to everybody but of course they're pros and he said uh, they don't have to worry about it but they are pros there's a look at our good friend uh, Nikolai Ozerov the Soviet play-by-play -play commentator with Igor Cherikov they're on the phone to Moscow there now as you can see getting ready to start the second period as these games are being televised back to the Soviet Union, so you know that about 100 million people will be looking on. Well, it's tomorrow over there now. Now we're going to start second period. And Coach Billy Harris will be starting the French selection line. That is with Ray Jean Houle, Serge Bernier, and Mark Tardif. Bernier and Houle with the Quebec Nordiques, and Tardif will play with the Quebec Michigan Stags. Going back at the fence, Whitey Stapleton and J.C. Tremblay. Center ice is going to be Petrov with Harmalov on the left wing and number 13, Mihailov on the right side. And the second period is underway with Canada leading one to nothing. Here's Bernier on the right side to Hull, and Hull is called offside. I think from day one in training camp that uh, Ray Jean Hull has been the fastest player on the club. But as we tried to make our prediction as to who would do what, I kind of felt that Ralph Baxter would be the one of the keys to this club because Baxter has just been a sensational back checker throughout the series against the Western Junior All Stars. Here's Ray Jean Hool again, flipping it in and moving in. Canadians are only sending one man in, keeping two men back. The play comes out to Mihailov. Mihailov intercepted by J.C. Trombley, who dumps it right back in again. Now there's a play. There's going to be a penalty call here on Ray Jean Hool as he dumped Alexander Gustav is called for tripping. Joseph Kampala, watch it for yourself. He gets the stick up kind of high, and I just think he caught him sort of off balance. I guess he hit him on the knee, and down he went. It has to be a tripping penalty, but it's uh, he let a lot more than that go in the first period, Johnny. Well, I, I thought that it was with the Joseph Kampala, who was in the big hay room over in Moscow, the... I thought that he would let an awful lot go uh, in this series, and he did in the first period. Well, he made the period. <laughs> he sure did. It helped. Well, they're playing rough, tough hockey. They'll just let him play hockey. But now is the first opportunity for that famous Russian power play. It's number 17, Harlamov. Bruce McGregor's out there killing penalties with Paul Henderson. Here's Harlamov going over the line. He shoots. That's loose in front of the net. It bounces off to the wing. There's a race for it with McGregor losing it to Gusev. And then he bounces off a leg and goes out to Harlamov at center right. Harlamov is being hounded there by Paul Henderson. Back up to center right again is J.C. Trombley. Watch him kill time here. Good move by Trombley. Henderson goes in to do some bumping. Keeps the puck inside the Soviet zone. Canadians are going pretty deep, but they're only sending one man in. Now it's Mihailov at the blue line. Pass to the corner to Petrov. Petrov looking to set it up. It's broken up by J.C. Trombley. To Mihailov. Mihailov around the boards to Vasiliev, number six. Vasiliev back over to the corner again. That is picked off by J.C. Trombley with a minute to go in the penalty. That is fired down the ice. That is blocked by the goalkeeper, Trechak. Vasiliev leading the four-man attack at center ice. Up to the Canadian blue line. Trombley knocked the puck off his stick for a moment, and then he dropped the stick on the ice to intercept the pass. It's Mihailov. Back to the blue line. Getting set. They're in that four-man box. They take the shot. They bang at it. And the goalkeeper is down. Trombley goes over to help Cheevers get the stick. It's back to Gusev. 
Gusev with 20 seconds left in the penalty. Back out in front. Gusev shot. It's Frank off the stick of uh, Yakushev. To Vasilyev. Vasilyev can't get a shot. Back over to Vasilyev again. It's knocked off the stick. And cleared down the ice. Mark Tardis, number 22. And we have five seconds left to go in the penalty. Back come the Soviets led at center ice by Alexander Gusev. Gusev. Back out to the line to Malta. Malta shoots. Oh, and it's a great save by goaltender Gary Keevers. And the Canadians are back at full strength. The puck is held against the boards, and they finally get a whistle on the play. One thing I noticed out there, uh, Howie, and the fans might look for it, when those players are next to each other, boy, they're taking two-handed shots on those ankles. Sure are. The only time we're in trouble in that whole period is when Bernier went out to the point. Just watch the Russians throw this puck around, and a great save by Cheever. Just a great save. Frank Mahovlich beats the pass out to Gordie Howe. Gordie Howe being caught from behind by number eight, Kapustin. Here comes Kapustin, and it's right in front of Mahovlich, and he hits the goal post. Frank Mahovlich putting out in front to Gordie Howe. Howe stick handling with it, and he loses it. He gets it back again. Back to pass over in front of Mahovlich. Over in front to shoot. But Jack kicked that one out. Canadians pouring pressure on as Shadrin starts Maltsev away at center right. Maltsev in front of the net. And the pass is intercepted by Mahavalich. Here comes Mahavalich with three men back. He tries to stick handle through, but Shadrin brings it back. Maltsev. Maltsev at center right. The pass over on the left wing is to Shadrin. And Rick Smith blocks it. Ralph Backstrom for Canada, fighting for it along the boards. Loses control of the puck, but he ties up his man, which is what you must do. And Gordy Howe clears the center. Canada leading one to nothing. And coming back for it is Yuri Lyapkin. He got a goal and five assists against Canada in the 72 series. Here comes a great young player, but the rebound off the goal pad of Jerry Cheevers back to Sigenkov. Back to Malta. And the face, the uh, fake the shot, and the puck was knocked out to center right. Back comes Anison, number 22. Anison being tied up by Johnny McKenzie. Here comes the puck loose on the opposite side as McKenzie gave him a wrap. Lebedev. Lebedev on the wing over there to Bodnov. Bodnov at the Canadian line. The pass over to Anison, and he lost it through his skate. Anison is bumped in there by Bobby Hull. And Lacroix goes back of his own goal. There's going to be a penalty called here. Here comes the puck out to the line, and it's picked off, and the whistle blows. And he looks like he's going to be calling a double. Andre Lacroix. See if we can get there what happened on the replay as Johnny McKenzie goes in. A little bit of hooking right here. Now watch the Russian player come through the center. There's the only chance that the Canadians forgot to pick up the Russian player coming through the middle. He's home free, but we couldn't get him to him because 16 does a great job of checking. As long as the Canadian fellows continue to take the man, as they have been doing, the Russians are going to get very few scoring chances. Well, the double penalty is Lyapkin from the Soviets and Johnny McKenzie, a 37-year-old Wrangler, who's just in perfect shape. He said he hasn't been feeling this good in years. So it'll be Whitey Stapleton and J.C. Tomley with Henderson and Walton to kill off the penalty. And for the Soviets, it'll be Harlamov and uh, Mihailov. Stapleton takes it around the back of his own net. Tries to dump it out to Henderson, but he loses it. And it's picked off now by Mike Walton. Mike Walton. Drops it for J.C. Trombley. Trombley starts up the center. Long pass over here for Walton. Breaking right in. He cuts it, but he hit the side of the net as Mike Walton. When it is just a half a stride too deep. Back comes Mihailov. Mihailov is cut from behind by Henderson. And the puck goes out. And it's called offside. What a back checker that Henderson has turned out to be. He sure comes back. He really does. Great pass here, and Henderson stayed on Henderson's stick, and he just had to pick it out of the air. This Walton here, if he cuts a little more, let it go for the short side. 
One minute and 31 seconds remaining in the double penalties. Well, as I said earlier, these, these members of Team Canada, they're emotionally high, and the fans here in Quebec have given, just given them tremendous emotional support. Serge Bernier is out there with Regine Hull to kill off the balance of the penalty. Now with Vasiliev, number six, back for the Soviets. He's a good rushing defenseman with Gusev. Here's Gusev, number two, feeding it ahead to Harlamov. But Harlamov couldn't see a clear pass, so he goes for the big skate. Gusev to Vasiliev. Vasiliev. At the line, here's a Mihailov. Mihailov with Vasiliev. It's out in front, and it's a break. Here he comes on the right side with uh, Bernier. One man back. Bernier with Hull trying to get it through. He goes it to Hull, but it hit a stick and went astray. Could not get a shot off it. Gusev with Bernier. He fires it around the back of the net. 14-26 remaining in the second period. Canada leading one to nothing. Down the left side is Mihailov. Mihailov has been getting tremendous ice time. Gusev. Gusev stopped there by Bernier. Gets away from Bernier. Puts it in front. And it hopped over the stick there of number 17, Harlamov. But Pat Stapleton has him tied up. Now it's Bernier. Bumped by Mihailov. And it's around the boards to Mihailov. 27 seconds left in the penalty. Here's the pass. By J.C. Tremblay with Bernier. And the pass did not go across. Gusev put a stick down. He almost deflected it into his own net. Now they got Mahovlitz winding up on the wing. Tremblay. Tremblay over to Backstrom. And Backstrom had it hop over to stick or he would have been home free. Masoff will come back out to the center red line. We have six seconds left in the double penalty. Playing four aside, it sure is a freewheeling wide open game, and all Trombley had to do was get that puck a little bit in the air and over the sticks, and Bernier had, had a whale of a chance. Head coach Boris Kalagin with Yurzinov and uh, Konstantin Lakshev, two great uh, former players with the Soviet team. They're now assistant coaches. The teams are back at full strength. Maltsev, number 10, left wing pass, puts it back into Lachenko. Lachenko being shattered by Gordy Howe. But Howe doesn't go in too deep. He makes him make the play. Puck is brought out to center right, and there's Schmier hitting Kapustin. Here comes Canada, led by Gordy Howe inside that Soviet zone. But the puck comes out to the Soviet blue line. The pass over to Kapustin. Kapustin! Back from behind on a beautiful uh, back-checking job by Paul Schmier. Here is Shadron. Shadron back to the line. There's a shot that's off the target. Back over to Sigenkov. Here's a breakaway. Going down there with Mahavlich and Backstrom. Now, let's see what he shoots. He shot. And the shot hit a pad. Back over to Paul Schmier. It's deflected in front. And the Canadians are trapped. Here come four Russians at the blue line. Rick Smith with that long poke check steers him wide. It's out to Lachenko. Scores! Vladimir Lachenko all the way from the blue line. Let his shot go right along the ice, and it's a 1-1 hockey game. You begin to see signs here of the pace telling on the Canadian team. They're getting caught too deep in the Russian zone, and they're just not able to come back. We got caught with two men on the fly on that goal, Johnny. With a, with a score, Canada won and the Soviets won. This is game one from Quebec City. Twelve minutes, 34 seconds remaining in the second period, a 1-1 hockey game. Now it's Bobby Hull's line with Andre Lacroix and Johnny McKenzie. McKenzie at center of the pass was behind Hull. Johnny McKenzie throws a check at the Canadian blue line, knocks the puck back out to center right. Andre Lacroix picks it up. Lacroix over to Bobby Hull. Bobby Hull was shot from behind. And he couldn't hold on to it. Now it's brought back out at center right. It's taken there by Brad Selwood. Kuznetsov, back of the goal. Long forward pass to his own line to Anison. Over to Johnny McKenzie as the pass went astray. Bobby Hull is knocked down and play carries right on. Out to the blue line. Here is Bruce McGregor trying to keep it inside that Soviet zone. Lacroix just fighting like a demon down there. Still has the puck. Puts it out in front. They bang at it. And he 
just went by the goal post. Bobby Hull is bumped. He has the puck. Hull puts it out in front of game. And they were changing players and were caught a man short. Back come the Russians, two on two. Here's Lebedev. Lebedev trying to get that backhand pass to Anissa. And Anissa's shot never got away as he lost it in his skate. Back to the blue line. There's Anissa being bumped by uh, Ricky Lee. Puck is taken there into the corner by Selwood. And they're really doing some shoving in front of that net. It's back to Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov fakes a shot. Bobby Hull checks in, but he's still got the puck. Puck goes to the corner. They're trying to throw it out. Oh, they had Mike Walton all alone at center ice, but they couldn't get the pass out as uh, Lebedev and Ricky Lee were tying each other up in the corner. 1-1 one, one hockey game. First game in the eight-game series. that will be in Toronto on Thursday night in Winnipeg on Saturday afternoon and in Vancouver on Monday night. Mike Walton, starting champion of the WHA, goes out there against uh, Petrov, number 16 for the Soviets. From the draw, it's back to Stapleton, the Tremblay. Tremblay ahead, but he can't get it out. Taken out by Mike Walton, cutting in. A man back, pass across, he shoots! Oh, a great save as Carl Henderson had uh, Trechak gone down on one knee, and he let the shot go right at him. At center rice, it's taken again by Henderson, who threw a bump at Harlamov. The pass over here now to Mike Walton, but it goes too far, and it's called back for icing. That hindered speed certainly stands him in good stead. He picked up a great pass from Walton there, and Trejek had to be very good to make the save. Billy Harris had some tough decisions to make. A lot of the players, of course, they all wanted to play in the first game, and he said they'd all play in the series. He said his final decision came down between uh, Frank Mahovlich or Mark Howe, and he chose Mahovlich, who had such an outstanding game in the last game in Edmonton, and that was the, what the deciding factor. Here's Vasiliev shot blocked, and Canada led by Bernier. Bernier out to the line. It's called offside. Went over two lines. look at the uh, intermission uh, the referees clinic and intermission uh, today to show you how some of them are picked and how many of them are trained for, for this series. Here comes Bernier. He cuts into center ice and, and he goes over in the right wing and over skated the puck as the center ice pass came from Reggie and Uhl. Now at center. Uhl goes a tremendous body check. And he's gotten Harlemann. Back over there now to Petra. Petra to Vasiliev. Going in over the line and the shot does not go across. Vasiliev. Back out in front of Mahela. A bouncing puck is taken by Bernier. Here comes Serge Bernier. Looking for that long pass. Here we go. Cardiff getting first their shot. But he's too far into the corner, so he looks for the pass out. Back to the blue line to J.C. Tremblay. Tremblay. Uses it inside the Canadian zone, but back after it goes Serge Bernier. Bernier comes up to the side of his own net. He's cut from behind there by Petrov and came dangerously close. Russians have it again, but this time it's picked up by J.C. Tremblay. Tremblay racing down the right side with Ray Jean Hull. Tremblay looking for somebody to pass it to, and it's knocked off his stick onto the stick of Mahela. Mahela going in with Vladimir Petrov, and it's off the back of the boards at the back of the net, and finally brought back out on the right side. Here we go, breaking right in there is... Back him, but there'll be a penalty called here. A half a stride, and Baxter would have been home free. If there's such a thing as a good penalty, I guess that's the one to take, Howie. Well, he's pretty safe in calling it. I want to show you this great check by who on Armanov. Here's the penalty call coming up in here. Yes, they did take the feet from under him. No doubt about it. And the signs flash up, go Canada, go, go across the rink. We'll have a look now at our first opportunity of a Here's the check. Play. Just watch this. Isn't this something? Look at them line them up. Hey, just great bodily contact. Woo! Who parked that truck there, he's wondering. How uh, Regine who only goes 165 pounds. Billy 
have 180. Now the Canadians have a chance for a power play, and they try to hold it in. It's taken there by Paul Spirit, a great play to Gordy Howe. Howe with Mahovlich in front of the net. Back to Backstrom. Over to Bobby Hull, he shoots! Hits the side of the net. And it's docked into the corner again. There's uh, Backstrom fighting over to Hull. Hull with Smear. He shoots! Oh, and that hit a leg. It's knocked over there to Smear. Smear holds it in. And Smear is knocked down. Here comes Chadron. Chadron at center ice. Canadians had a great shot off that power play as the big M winds up in front of his own goal. Down that right side. Gets away from Yakishev. The pass out to Gordy Howe at center is uh, intercepted and shot back in. Minute and 17 seconds left in the penalty, and here comes Bobby Hull with Gordy Howe. What a combination. Mahovlich is the other winger. Going into the corner, Gordy Howe goes in to fight for it. He and Sigenkov have it. Back to Walt, not in front. Here's Bobby Hull, shoots good! Bobby Hull! Hull makes this check here. He takes the Russian right out, hangs on to him. Walt picks it up, throws it out in front of the net. How about that shot? Wrapped it in off the boat. The crowd's going wild here in Quebec. Bobby Hall, who has scored 658 goals, 1,268 points, and we now have a two to one hockey game. So, with the score, Canada 2, the Soviets 1. This is game one from Quebec City. Bobby Hull. Gordy Howe and Mike Walton. Get credit for the assist on the goal. Seven minutes. Seven minutes and 50 seconds left in the period, and the Canadians take it right back down to Soviet territory with Paul Henderson holding it there for the whistle. Henderson, who joins the Toronto Toros along with the Big M. And the Big M, Big Natamansky, I'll bet you he's kind of enjoying this back there in Toronto tonight. Bolton with Bruce McGregor on his right wing. Henderson goes in bumping. And the puck comes back out to the blue line. There's Ricky Lee. He shot one round. Here's Walton. He shoots. Oh, it went by the corner. As Mike Walton gave it a great try. It's Henderson tying up number 22 and Eason. Got out of here by Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov at center to Maltsev. Maltsev at the line. Tries to slide through. And there's going to be a penalty call here to Brad Selwood. As Selwood dumps the Soviet player. And now the Soviets get a chance for the power play. Walton had quite a chance to score a goal there. And all he had to do was get it up high, but in the WHA, they're allowed a severely curved stick, and he just got the puck along the ice. Trecek come up with a great save. Here's the penalty coming up. I don't know about that. Well, he got him. It's a bit of a swan dive, but also a pretty good pull on the stick by Selwood. No penalties in the first period, but we've now had... Uh, Five in the second period. Brad Selwood, the 25 year old defenseman from the New England squad. And now Canada sends out Mahovlich out there along with Ralph Baxton to kill off the penalty. Whitey Stapleton is out there along with uh, J.C. Trombley. And now the power play for the Soviets. Being led by big Alexander Yakushev, number 15. Yakushev at the line, drops the pass over to Maltsev. He's got a man in front of the net. Back to Luchenko. Luchenko shoots as a bouncing puck goes through. And Mahovlich takes it against the boards but can't clear it out. It's brought out in front of the net. There's a shot. Oh, oh. a great save by Jerry Cheever. J.C. Trombley flips it high in the air and down the ice. He wasn't going to take any chances on having that puck trapped inside his own zone. Maltsev. As it picked off again by Frank Mahovlich. Mahovlich killing time. 
He gets over the line and he fires it down with a minute 10 left in the penalty. Serge Bernier is now out there along with Ray Jean Hull filling off the penalty. Up there now it's number five, Yuri Lyapkin. He can't make hay with it and they'll try it up along the boards and get a whistle on the play. Referee Jim LeBlanc, the Canadian linesman. There'll be a Canadian and a Soviet linesman in each game. But we could have a Polish referee, a West German referee, a Canadian referee, or a Russian referee in each of the games. 54 seconds left in the penalty. And it's Bernier going to center. Now with Vasiliev, number six. He takes a look. Trying to get set up properly here to make the best advantage of the 47 seconds left in the power play. Harlebov being hounded by Hul. He's up center. Harlebov can fly. Going over the line. Trying to break away. Oh, he scores! Oh, a sensational goal by Harlebov. Who broke right through there and he shot it to the top right-hand corner. There was no mistake about that one, Howie. That was pro all the way. All right. You don't see that type too often. That's a great play. The wings were open, and this is the problem why the defense had to split. Just look at that shift. Now watch him tuck it upstairs, too. Just hit Keeper stick right upstairs underneath the crossbar. Here he comes again from the other end. This is just a great shot. Look at how the defense opens up. Trombley waves at him, tries to hook him. They get him with the stick, but too late, and in she goes. The 2-2 hockey game, 5.51 remaining in the second period. And the play comes out of center ice. Led over here now by number 11, Yuri Lebedev. Lebedev, here's intercepted, Johnny McKenzie goes in and he shoots. Here comes the rebound, and Bobby Hull couldn't get to it. Back out at center right, at the line, and there's Butterknob being knocked down by a good hip check. And the puck bounces to center. Lebedev was given credit for an assist on that goal. There's going to be a penalty called here. As Paul Smear and Bobby Hull together hit Lebedev. And uh, once again, we'll have a Canada for the man in the penalty box. It's Paul Smear. Power plays have uh, been a factor. The, the last two goals were scored on power plays. Paul <laughs> Smear. Paul Schmier, two minutes for tripping. Time of the penalty, 14 minutes, 38 seconds. Gregor goes out to kill off the penalty with Henderson. Stapleton takes it around the boards and uh, clears it to the line, but not out. Taken by Harlamov. Harlamov passes it over on the wing, is kept in. Gusev fakes a shot, fires the pass to the corner. Canada sitting in the four-man box now, trying to force the play by the Russians. And you'll notice McGregor's not rushing out to the puck carrier there. It's knocked high in the air, comes right back onto the Soviet stick and went wide of the post. It's Harlamov. Harlamov right in front of that net. Puck bounced over Petrov's stick. Back to the blue line to Gusev. Gusev takes a shot, then lets it go. Checked out by Cheevers to the corner. Back to the line again to Gusev. Gusev shoots. That's a block that's taken by Paul Henderson. Henderson fires it down the ice. A minute and 11 seconds left in the penalty, and it's a 2-2 hockey game. Frank Mahovlich comes out with Ralph Saxton now to kill penalty. It's Petrov on a drop pass to Harlamov. Harlamov shoots. It's deflected. Goes up over the glass and out of play. That takes great discipline to maintain your position in the box like that with the, the Russians throwing the puck around the outside. Rather exciting to get over the jitters. I recall before the first game of the last series, Paul Henderson saying that uh, his body was so tight and brittle that it was expected to just shatter on the first impact. Well, I'm sure that a lot of them feel that way, but there have been some shattering impacts so far in this game, and they're both settled down and they're playing outstanding hockey with four minutes and 11 seconds left in this second period. Now the Soviets with a power play. It's Kapustin. He's stopped by the Canadian defenseman 
And this Pahavlitz is taking a body check from Sigenkov. Mouth catch Big Frank like that, but he comes roaring back. Here's Maltsev in over that line. Maltsev has it taken away from him and dumped out to center right. Knocked down by number seven, Sigenkov. Kapustin, number eight. Around his own goal. Back out to Shadron. Shadron hit by Mahavlitz. Back over to Ricky Lee as the Canadians are killing off time here. Oh. The Apkin breaking in, but the puck is bouncing. They're all taking whacks at it. Nobody seems to get control of it. Here is Shadron. And uh, now the teams are back at full strength, but the Russians have control in the Canadian zone. Back off the board. It's Maltsev. Maltsev being shattered by Backstrom. Taken off the stick of the goalkeeper, Jerry Cheevers. And Ricky Lee goes back of his own goal. He's caught from behind. Shadrin has it. And Schmier runs him in the boards, and Schmier is going to take a penalty. Well, Howie, this is the thing that they've been, they were very worried about in training camp. Paul Schmier is a rough, rugged hockey player. He likes to run at people. Well, he run at him there, and all he had to do was keep the stick down. It would have been a great check had he just kept the stick down below the hip. Look at this, he breaks it up, and the referee has no choice when you get the stick in the hand up and, and uh, nail him like that. Our problem all started here, though, is that when we got possession of the puck, then our three forwards moved out again, and that puts too much pressure on the two defensemen that are handling the puck in deep. The Canada's penalty to number 18, Paul Schmier. There's another five, angle on that check. And it hurts. There you can see him heading in. Here he comes. Now watch him get the stick up and the glove up. Pretty good contact, but a little illegal. They have to keep uh, holding play up as uh, rubbish is being thrown on the ice. Uh, they were fortunate to survive that uh, last penalty, but uh, you know you can only give the Russians so many power plays before they're going to uh, crank one on you. I just sit here and shudder when, when we start to play offense before we get the puck out over our blue line. Whitey Stapleton flipped that puck right in front of his own net, clears it to the line, but not out. Here it is, back out in front. Oh, what a shot by Lebedev. Goes right. They bang it, and it's like the score. With Petrov standing right out in front of the goal and nobody there to cover him. And now the Soviets go in front 3-2. to two. So the power play continues to work. The Russians keeping it in. The problem here again is that we get control of the puck and throw it out to the point. And from the point, the Russians keep it in, and we get running around. There the puck is kept in. It's fed back in front where there are two Canadians and three Russians. Two Canadian players go after the puck, and there's the Russian home free with the two chaps who are out too far, coming in too late. Here comes the break. That was Bernier Bernier. Going in. He got Tardif on the left wing, but he couldn't get that pass across. Around the back of the net, it's Botanov. Botanov to Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov starting out on that long forward pass to Lebedev, who's waiting up in the center red line to Botanov. Botanov going in. He's caught from behind by Tardif. He kind of let his shot go, but it was weak as he was being tied up by Tardif. Soviets leading 3-2, and that's the first time they've been in front. But they've been doing it uh, with the advantage of the power play. Three to two, the score. One of the things that concerned Billy Harris with his defenseman was not so much well hitting this like that and taking penalties, but rushing defensemen. He was afraid that a defenseman like J.C. Trombley might try to carry the puck too much. Now with the uh, Soviets inside the Canadian zone, as Bobby Hall with Andre Lacroix, Rick Smith take that pass over to Johnny McKenzie, and he couldn't get going with it. Back they come to that Canadian line, Botnov, Botnov, back over in front to an east and he shoots. And that shot is blocked in front of the net. Back comes Bobby Hull. Bobby Hull stick handling across on the line with Paul Schmier. And the pass went too far astray. Back comes Schmier. Schmier back inside his own zone to Ricky Lee, or to Rick Smith rather. And it's back to Paul Schmier. Schmier at center. Pass is blocked. Botnov has it. Botnov to Anison. Anison. Looks for that drop pass to Lebedev. Lebedev is hit. 
two Canadians rushing in to throw the body check, and that's a mistake. Here comes uh, Lacroix going in. Lacroix cannot get that pass across. Here's Andrew Lacroix to Bobby Holly shoots. Just wide of the net. Right out in front again. Here they wait for that loose puck, and Rick Smith shoots. They bang at it, and they hold it out underneath Kretschak. Who's net top, and little uh, Andre Lacroix were having a shoving duel in front of that net, but Kretschak had the puck underneath them. Like this blazer. This is that something else by Hull just off the boat. There's the loose puck. Great save. Two Canadians trying to put the puck in the net, and we just can't get it in. They're getting those chances. And it was nice to see them come roaring back like that so that that one uh, goal that was just scored out won't take too much steam out of Frank Mahovlich's shot as a soft one along the ice. Looked like he changed his mind between a slap shot and a wrist shot and let it go very weakly. Now Gordy Howe. Back over at Sun Race to Selwood. Over the left side to Mahovlich. Mahovlich going in over the blue line. Trying to work it out in front of the net. They lose. Here it is. Oh, and off the stick of Farrell Backstrom and he couldn't get his shot. Kapustin. Down the line, he's hit there by J Lee, maintains his balance, however, and now it's into the corner. Out in front, here comes Ricky D, looking for somebody to pass it to. Nobody's open. Finally put it right out of the stick of Kapustin. Kapustin is stopped. It's back to the blue line. And Gennady Ziginkov, number seven, back out at center. Passing it around now to Liapkin. Liapkin, number five, with 24 seconds left in the period. Leapkin fakes the pass, still has it. Intercepted by Gordy Howe. And the Canadians are backing in now, playing a little more defensive-minded hockey. Out come the Russians at the blue line. And there's Lee throwing the body check that misses. He almost let the, the, uh, the, the wingman slide by and get a shot on him. Mike Walton, with one hand, dumps it out. And he goes over the line, but the buzzer sounds to end the second period. So the Soviets, with the advantage of the power play, come back with two goals to finally go on top, three to two. But I think that the uh, discussion in the intermission this time will have a lot to do with the runs that they're taking in the corners, keeping the sticks down so that they're not being trapped with those penalties because the Russian power play is just simply too potent and you can't afford to let them have that many too many chances. With the score, the Soviets three and Canada two. This is game one from Quebec City. Well, the tournament for Canada is going to be Andre Lacroix, Petra for the Soviet Union as we get the third period underway. It's a three to two hockey game, and the clock will show 9.55 right now because they'll play the third period in two 10 minute periods uh, according to international rules. Vasiliev, number six, inside his own zone. As the Soviets with a great lead come rolling out. Mahalo going right in and he overskated the puck. Had nobody to beat. He had Jerry Cheevers coming out. Overskated. The, everybody's overskating the puck. That ice must be very wet down there. And as a result, they can't drag that puck with them. Here's a shot from the corner. It's taken now by Bobby Hull. Over to Andre Lacroix. He overskates it. The ice is simply wet and sticky. Here goes a shot that does not get off a stick. There was Harlamov, who was not even going to try to slap it. He was going to try a wrist shot, and even that didn't get off his stick. Well, the Zamboni, when they flood the ice, goes that there's all kinds of water left in that one spot. And that's what happened there. Just unbelievable, isn't it? Well, I I guess if I'm a Team Canada, I'm, <laughs> i I got to like that, because what's happened there is nobody's going to get any shots on goal on you. Now, Bobby Hull... One of the Team Canada coaches, or assistant coach of Billy Harris, has gone down and asked them to come out with some squeegees or shovels and get that out of there. Now, what they should have done... <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, I was doing it at it. the right time. <laughs> no, no, I even see, I notice now that even as he, as the um, helper comes out, even as he put the shovel down inside the Soviet end, I noticed that water came up onto that shovel, so it's apparently wet all over and not just down in the Canadian end. You know, Billy Harris' uh, theory uh, is that there are other things in life than hockey, but as a way of life, I mean, hockey is pretty hard to beat. And you know, this was some of the, uh, the 
preaching that he was doing to the players as they came to camp. And you can imagine he's doing this to 10, 12, 15-year veterans. He's telling rookies the same thing and trying to sell that message. Uh, he challenges his players to do things. I, I don't order them to do things. I challenge them. And he said, uh, challenge them to get in shape. He challenged them to reach certain goals. He challenged them to report to camp in certain conditions. And uh, he said more than 50% arrived in better shape than he had possibly hoped for. The official is getting cheered, is getting cheers for taking the shovel off. That's about the only time they cheer officials. But the players are skating around, just letting the ice dry a little bit. All the Russians left the bench to go out and skate. Uh, I don't know whether they were trying to do it to sight cannon or not, but in the last five minutes, just before they left the ice, just before 8 o'clock in the warm-up, the Soviets, from their own blue line to their end zone, did stops and starts for about two minutes. Now, either they're in fantastic shape or they're trying to sight the Canadians. At any rate, it looked pretty good. Well, we're back underway again with 9.15 remaining in the first half of the third period. And for Canada, it's past Tableton. At the line, Maltsev takes it away from him, and Andre Lacroix brings it out with Johnny McKenzie, but he couldn't get that pass across. Back inside the Canadian zone, Bobby Hull pokes it out. Hull to McKenzie, McKenzie to Hull. And they're still having trouble controlling that puck. That ice is still wet. Very jam-packed crowd. It's very humid in here. That's a... Uh, ooh. Maltsev, we don't see him do that very often. Slipped and fell. Lost his balance completely. Now we have Bobby Hull winding up inside his own zone with Whitey Stapleton. Back over the center on the right side to Hull trying to get him to get his shot away. There it is, but it was blocked. The puck was rolling, couldn't get a good piece of it. Long shot down the ice. It's right on goal. And a shot out ahead here to Tremblay. Tremblay to Lacroix. Lacroix back to Johnny McKenzie. And McKenzie can't get a play. So Whitey Stapleton turns inside his own zone. Head to Lacroix with Hull, looking for Hull on the left wing. The pass went there, but Hull had turned to come the other way. 3-2 hockey game in favor of the Soviets. Game number one in the series. And Easton, number 22, up to center. This kid can fly. There's a shot, and Cheevers turned it aside. Into the corner, Regine Hull around the board to Lebedev. Lebedev stopped by uh, Mark Tardif, and it's cleared down the ice. This goes all the way, and the ice looks pretty good now because that slid pretty quickly. And Billy Harris, when he was coaching in Sweden, played the Soviets uh, three times, and uh, he lost one in the last minute to tie the other two. Third Bernier. Armour Ray Gino and Mark Todd up the forward line. Carl Schmier fighting for the puck inside his own zone. Knocked the helmet off, number 24, Budnov. Ahead here to Paul Schmier. Schmier, number 18, waiting. And he decides to carry it up on the right side. It's taken, going right in for it. Here goes the Ray Gino in the corner, trying to get Bernier set. And the puck does not come across. Rick Smith, number 17, at the line. There's uh, Serge Bernier. Bumping into Luchenko and knock him down. Oh, they take the swipe at a player, but the player goes by him. Kuznetsov shot is wide, looking for the rebound, but Jerry Cheevers clears. Out in front to Lebedev, to Bodnov, out of front. Oh, and the shot by Kuznetsov was wide of the target. Here's Lebedev, and the Russians are in control now in this third period. Lebedev to Bodnov, but Kevin sliding in front of it was Paul Smear. Smear back up his own net to Serge Bernier. Bernier to Schmier. And they tie it up along the boards and finally get a whistle on the play. Schmier is a different hockey player in this third period, uh, Howie. He certainly is. He had two opportunities to make illegal checks, and he made real good, solid checks. Um, I believe Billy Harris told them, look at fellas, don't vacate our defensive zone too soon, because all the time that the Russians had three attackers in there, he had five red jerseys in behind the the uh, face-off circles, and that's what they're going to have to do and get their breaks from there. There's a loose puck in front of the net, and Cheevers makes a great save, and they finally clear it to the blue line. Here's a shot. Picked off now by Mike Walton. Walton with Henderson and McGregor going in over the line, and McGregor had it knocked off of his stick. Back come the Soviets at center ice. 
Cleared off on the wing. Back after it is Vasiliev. 3-2 for the Soviets. Vasiliev in the long lead pass to Harmelov at center. With Vasiliev, the forward. He gets away from Henderson. And the puck is poke checked back to Henderson. Henderson. Off the boards to Lee. Lee has trouble controlling it. Henderson has it. Puts it right on the Vasiliev stick. And then he takes it away. And Henderson goes down. Now Lee takes a senseless run on a hockey player. Henderson can't get out. It's taken out by Mike Walton. One man back. Walton trying to get by Gustav. Gustav pulls him down. The play carries right on. Back come the Soviets led here by Petrov. Petrov at the line. A drop pass for Harlem. Shoots. Oh, and a great oh. save by Jerry Cheever. Shot, the most shot at goalkeeper in all major hockey last winter with the Cleveland Crusaders with Cheevers. He faced 2,000 of them, maybe some like this. This is a great save, and Cheevers has made two in a row just like this. Puck bounced off the stick of Sikinkov, and then he was given a wrap there by Mahavlich. Keevers has to come out to clear to Mahavlich. Ray Stapleton finally dumps it down the ice, and it rolls all the way into Soviet territory, and is called back for icing. I might point out, you mentioned curved sticks earlier. International hockey only allows a half-inch curve. The CHA has the same rule, but the WHA allows an inch and a quarter curve on the stick, and that's the rule that they have adopted uh, for this series. Well, I'd hate to measure some of them out there. <laughs> Here comes Stapleton trying to break out from the faceoff. Puck slides ahead to Lyapkin. And it's at the line, Gordy Howe. He's been out for a rest. He's out there now with Ralph Baxter and Frank Mahavlich. Back come Kapustin. And he is stopped by J.C. Trombley. Here's Howe, the Baxter. Baxter off the left side. Over there to J.C. Trombley, and Trombley couldn't get it in. Back after it is Stapleton. Stapleton fires it all the way down to Soviet territory, and we have 4.32 remaining in the first half of this period. 3-2 for the Soviets. A long pass to Kapustin. Kapustin being steered off there by J.C. Tromblay, and he fires it off the boards to Mahavlich. Mahavlich can't get it out. Puts it on the stick of Kapustin over to Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe, left wing pass to Mahavlich. Mahavlich racing into the corner. Mahavlich around the boards, lost the puck. Second call. That puck hit a stick and bounced all the way out to J.C. Trombley at center. He was wrapped there by uh, Kapustin. Trombley was down, and there's a hooking penalty being called. So Sergei Kapustin... And I might tell you, if this uh, hockey player has got a hot streak going, it's Kapustin. He came into this game. He has scored 13 goals in the last 16 games he's played. Well, he has that type of shot. Team Canada, I think, now are going on hard and experience. Certainly, they haven't very much left physically. Here's the penalty coming up. As long as they don't get two men caught, Send two men in too deep. They can maybe tie this hockey game, and there's one chance coming up right now. Vasiliev is hit there by Bobby Hall, who's back out on the point on the power play. So we have uh, Schmier starting it away with Bobby Hall. With lacrosse, Paul Henderson and Johnny McKenzie up over that Russian blue line. Hull takes oh. it in, feeds it through, and a beautiful fake. It's over to Andre Lacroix. Lacroix. Moves it to Mihailov. It's back to Bobby Hall. Hall oh, shoots. Oh, and a great save there by Petriak. Henderson fires it up into the uh, crowd. And out of play. It's interesting to note here that Big Yakushev is not dressed in this third period. Now, he's got a groin injury. And that's a big loss to them because uh, he's a good one. Now we have Paul Smear at the line for Canada, carrying it into the corner, looking for that point pass. Puts it right out of front of the shoot! Oh, and a great save there off Henderson. Down the back of the net, Vasiliev, taken by McKenzie. McKenzie back over to Bobby, to uh, Paul Smear. He shoots right in front. 
And he tried to deflect it in. It's just intercepted now by Petrov with a minute left in the penalty. And uh, Petrov flips it high in the air and down into Canadian territory. 55 seconds left in the penalty. Bobby Hull leads it ahead to Paul Henderson with Johnny McKenzie. McKenzie going in. McKenzie cutting in the short side. Well, that is not comes Jerry Cheevers out to the blue line to stop the shot to feed the forward pass to keep the power play going. Oh, but it's knocked off a of Bobby Hull stick. Now we come up again. It's Mark Chart at number 22. He has it poke checked away from him by Maltza. Maltza shoots. Oh, and a split save by the goalkeeper Jerry Cheevers. Then Schmier takes a run at Shadwin. 17 seconds left in the penalty. Johnny McKenzie across the ice here to Serge Bernier. Having trouble getting the power play started now. Bad pass back to Bobby Hull. Hull around to Serge Bernier. And we have the team back at full strength. Serge Bernier at center ice. Over to Ray G. Newell. Who's breaking in front of him? Oh, he shoots. Oh, a great save by the goalkeeper, Dretjak. What a move by Ull. He, he went around that Russian nutrition. Just take a look at this. Like he was tied on. Just a great move. Great pass by Bernier. Now look at here. Look at the Russian defenseman. Never made an effort to go and get him. Watch him cut in here. Forcing Trechek to make a great save. Oh, he tried to pull Trechek, and instead of pulling all the way to make him come, he gave him the half pull, That's and right. then tried to go back to the short side. Minute 45 left in this first half of the third period. There's a slap shot that just wide of the ball. It bounced loose. Oh, right, right over the top. As Ray Jean Hull had a great chance on the rebound. Who oh, is playing fine hockey out there. It's taken at the line and it's finally kept in and it rolls out. There's Luchenko letting a slap shot go, but it was a roller. Trombley off the board. Stopped by Anison. Gets it again. Kicks it ahead. Trombley. Oh, he tried to get it up there to uh, Cardiff. Cardiff over to Trombley. They're inside the Russian zone. He keeps it in. Canadian does three men right up for the shoot. Gene <laughs> Hull oh, and Trechak was down. Trechak shakes his head in disbelief. He didn't know he'd made the stop. Just great pursuit here by the Team Canada players. Look at this save. And who, great shape, certainly working his hardest. The French, they call that line the French selection. And obviously very popular here, and they're going to be very, very popular all over because that's a great line. Petrov, number 16, comes to center. Mike Walton gets the draw, takes it over to Mike Walton in front of the net, trying to get a shot away. There's the shoot shoots. Oh! Petrya did not see it. Back comes the Soviet that sent right to Mihaila. Reaches forward to block the shot. That is taken now by Henderson. Henderson coming up now with Walton. One man back. Can he get it across? No, it hit a broken stick. Piece of a broken stick lying on the ice. Henderson still has it. Here it is right on the front. Oh, and Petrya makes another save. I can't believe it. Henderson right on the puck. Watch the pass to McGregor, and McGregor's home free and tries to get it up high over Trechek, and he still makes the save. The rebound would not go to Walton. Look at here. Look at him post in home free. Nobody there. Look at three Russians in the corner. A little bit of pressure, and they break down as well. There's another look at it, and... Uh Jack is either calling time for a breather by telling the official there's something wrong with his pad. At any rate, he's very smart if he is doing that because the Canadians were flying. Now it's going to be Backstrom, Hull, Mahovlich, Paul Smear, and finally Rick Smith, who was late getting out. There's a shot right to the side of the net by Gordy Howe. Howe reaching for it and held in. Long bouncing shot. Here's a race for that puck. And Kapustin comes diving over. He goes sliding right into the net as he went over top of Rick Smith. And then the goalkeeper, Cheevers, came out to grab it to make sure it didn't go astray. Now 
Ralph Backstrom is uh, leading so far. He's won 67% of all his face-offs. And right behind him is Mike Walton, who's won 57%. Serge Bernier, oh, sorry, Serge Bernier has won 80% of his face-offs. Just an unbelievable hockey game for the being the first one in an eight-game series. You think it was the seventh and final game of the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's a tremendous game. Here's Gordy Howe reaching through that maze of legs to pull that puck out. Gives it to Whitey Stapleton. Stapleton ahead on the wing to Mahovlich. Couldn't control it. Now he has it back to Howe at center. Gordy Howe bumps it ahead there to uh, Baxter. And Baxter trying to stay on side was off balance. J.C. Trombley. Stapleton to Howe. Back over to Baxter. Over to Mahovlich. Good passing combination. Right over here to Howe at back. Oh! buzzer sounded to end the first 10 minutes of the third period. So now that they'll change in. Because of the rules of the International High Hockey Federation, both teams will now exchange their respective ends. And with the, the score of the Soviets 3, Canada 2, this is game one from Quebec City. At the conclusion of the game, Yeah, well, I've been wearing it all along, but they haven't got a thing, so I'll put it back in again. Three to two. Soviets over Canada. Lacroix and Shad's it in for the faceoff. Back over to Maltsev. He goes in right from that left side. His shot. Oh, and a fine save by Terry Cheevers. Love hand stop that wide. There's a look at that play again as you see Cheevers reaching for that top left hand goalkeeper. The all star goalie, formerly with the Boston Bruin Ironman. And we almost had that break in pass there for Bobby Hull. That's the one they've been trying to set up for him. J.C. Trombley, back of his own net with Matt Stapleton. Stapleton leaves it for Hull. Now they're trying to get him round up. He gets by Anison. Gets by two. Out to center right. Down the right wing. Trying to get by Luchenko. Gets by around the back of the net, and then he has it again. Here's Bobby Hull right out in front. After all that work, nobody there to uh, get the shot away. Here's Johnny McKenzie. Over on the left side to Hull. Will he get a shot off the board? He does. Oh, and Kutchak made the save. Oh, that's the kind he waits for. When he comes out of his own zone there, Johnny, he just flew by two Russians like, you know, <laughs> like their side on. When he gets under a full head of steam, I guess there's nobody in hockey anywhere can touch him. Well, he's certainly one of the most electrifying players of all time. And his fourth in scoring, second in uh, goal scoring. He ranked third as the most uh, sportsmanlike player in the WHA. He was an all-star Second all-time scoring to Gordy Howe with 657 goals. Here he is now with Serge Bernier to Hull behind the net. Hull trying to set it up now. Tires it across, but it hit a skate. Bernier is parked right in front of that goal. Ray Jean Hull right out in front. And it hit a stick and went astray. Routed now by Harlamov. Harlamov cutting over on the right side. He loses his balance. It's taken there now by... Started, but he was tripped. Play carries right on. Inside goes Mihailov, who shot. And that was blocked there by Jerry Cheevers. Around the back of the net, Cheevers takes a look at it because they didn't seem to be able to control it. It's still lost back of the net. Here comes Tardiff with it. Mark Tardiff, number 22. Around to Ricky Lee. Canadians having trouble getting started. Lee to Tardiff. Tardiff's long pass out here to center right. Over the line, going in is Bernier. He shoots, oh, and Kutchak dropped him again. Bernier leaning against the board, just shaking his head. He cannot believe it. Just watch this great shift by Bernier. And walks in home free. Look at there, the puck goes with him. Straight it out, check it. Makes a pretty good move, too, to try to put it between his legs. And the Soviet goaltender covers up. Hey, it's got to be a goaltender's game, Johnny. 
Well, Trechak has robbed Team Canada now just consistently. Oh, rolling puck went right to him there. Fired off the board, just kept it the line, but it's offside. That was a good call. Good call. Came out a couple of inches, but the linesman was right there to see it. Walton gets the face off over to Schmier, back to Walton, and over that line, back over to Henderson. Henderson tried to set it up, and it hits his skate. Still has control of it, however, bouncing right out in front of the net. And it's cleared up to the line. Shadwin, number 19, over to Kapustin. Kapustin, number eight, into the corner. With Andre Lacroix, has him all the way. Now it's Henderson. Henderson gets it out. Here's a race for it with Mike Walton. Walton can't get control. Henderson has it, but he has to kick it and lost control in doing so. Now it's Paul Schmier. He stopped up the Soviet line. Maltsev. Maltsev is, gets away from uh, the check by Henderson and is taken by Paul Schmier. Schmier loses it. Here goes Maltsev. One man back. Trying to get set for that shot. He does. And it hit his stick and went wide. Now Bruce McGregor ahead to number 18. Paul Schmier. And Schmier pokes the puck ahead as they're changing players on the fly. It's Rick Smith with Frank Mahavlin. Long shot goes into the corner. 6.56 remaining. Long shot goes all the way down the ice, and that'll be called back for racing. Two or three things I've noticed that are different in recent years is that the Russians will send two or three men into a corner that they didn't used to do. They're forechecking like they didn't used to do, and they're icing the puck. That's which great. he didn't use to do. That's great. I might mention here that Rick Smith just finished playing two great shifts of hockey. That he continues to check like that. He's all right. Back out to the line. Led up here now by Lebedev, number 11. Lebedev is steered off by Whitey Stapleton, and Mahavlis has it. Mahavlis up with Backstrom. And the Rover skates it. Now taken by Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe with Backstrom. Works his way in. Back to the top. Russian linesman made the call, and with the score, the Soviet three Canada two. This is game one from Quebec City. Now, as they move into it with Petrov up to that Canadian blue line, Johnny McKenzie has his elbow up high. Play carries right on. It's back to McKenzie. McKenzie trying to set it up on that left wing pass out of Bobby Howell. Here's Bobby Howell going in over the line. A pass on the right side was offside as Andre Lacroix could not put on the brakes. Andre Lacroix was the leading scorer in the WHA in its initial season. Second behind Mike Walton last season with uh, 31 goals and 80 assists. He's one of the smoothest centers around. It 175 pounds, although I think that weight flatters him just a little bit, although he hits like that. Five minutes, 51 seconds remaining in the hockey game. Soviets leading three to two. Canadians with Johnny McKenzie and Lacroix keeping it inside. Right in front of game and the Canadians you're right have had control here in the third period here comes uh, Mark Carter racing down that left side and he gives Sigenkoff a wrap around the head as he goes through there's held in by Rick Smith 
as he and Kapustin fight for it. Now they battle for it. It's taken by Mark Charter. Charter trying to set it up in front. Right out in front. Right back to the blue line. To Smear. Smear shoots. That's deflected. To the side of the net. Charter just by the goalpost. And it comes all the way out to center right. Rick Smith and Paul Smear are back. And Smear is back to make up the play. With uh, Serge Bernier coming in to hold it against the board. Mark Charter just missed the goalpost by a fraction of an inch. You know, you just have to have a fantastic pride in the way these fellas are playing. They've reached down to the bottom of the well, found heart, found strength, found that great professional pride they have, and they're trying to win a real good hockey game. There's the Prime Minister with Doug Fisher, the President of uh, Hockey Canada, and Mr. Rogolsky of the Soviet Union. He keeps looking up at the clock as all of us are. 4.59 remaining. It's been a great night for Bobby Hull, yeah. Think of, think of the ovation when we get to Winnipeg on, uh, on Saturday for Bobby Hull. Especially if we happen to win one or two. Mackenzie, uh, Hull and Lacroix. Hull got two goals, and that line has been an alt has been on two goals as a complete unit, and Hull got one from Walton and Howe. There's the play. Now at the center right, Mike Walton trying to reach for it. Taken by Henderson. Henderson is pulled down. It's going to be a penalty. Interesting statistic from our game reporter, Bobby Hull has made 10 passes, and he's given 99% on his 10 passes. Amazing. He hasn't missed his target very often. I would kind of think here the crowd called the penalty, and the referee had no intention of making the call. I wish we could see him in our picture, but he was watching the play. I watched his hand go up after the crowd hollered. This sounds like game eight in Moscow two years ago. This sounds like the greatest entertainment in the world, John. It's just what it is. You can't beat this hockey. Minute 55 left in the penalty as Paul Smear tries to come outside of his own zone. Around the boards to Bobby Hull. A 3-3 hockey game, 4.30 remaining. Now it's Gordy Howe. He fires it across, but it's too high. Soviets are killing this penalty very well. Howe changes hands on the stick and pulls Petrov. Here we go, Howe going in with Gordy Howe. Here's Howe shooting. Oh, one by the goalpost. Back out in front, to, back to behind the net to Gordy Howe. Which side is he coming out? To Bobby Howe, he shoots. Oh, and Howe almost deflected it in. Back out in front again. And that was intended for Howe, but it cleared down the ice. Back comes Paul Smear. Smear is having trouble controlling it. He holds it there, and he can maze the legs, but Luchenko clears it down the ice. A minute and three seconds left in this op in this uh, penalty. 3.42 left in the game. Here comes Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe at center. The pass to Frank Mahovlich. Mahovlich looking, looking for Hull. There's Hull at the side of the net. Trying to jam it from the short side. Right in front of the Oh, and a great save as the defenseman Luchenko fell in front of it and blocked it. 39 seconds left. Canadians are changing on the fly. Paul Smear leaves it back there now for Serge Bernier. Bernier, Elvis skates it. And taken back here by Harlamov. Harlamov, and it comes out to center right. Harlamov still has it, however. 20 seconds left in the penalty. Gusev fires it down into Canadian territory. And I'll tell you, these are two tired hockey clubs right now. 3-3 the score. There will be no overtime if it stays this way. Here comes Serge Bernier. Bernier hits Chadron. Here goes Whitey Stapleton. Stapleton shoots, but it's called offside. Billy Harris was smart, Howie, and changing him as frequently as he does. There's no doubt about that. That's been a key maneuver, and I think the experience of the fellas, too. They've, they've 
I think, reduce the time that they're spending on the ice. They make one or two shots, and then they get off. And this is the only chance they have of maintaining this pace. You know, one of the greatest skills in the game is being able to, to play close to your um, top performance under the threat of being hit. A good bodily contact hockey, which we've had here tonight. And it's brought the Russians with their Humpty Dumpty style of play, their smooth passing, really back. And, and you see them making mistakes that they've never made before. Two seconds left to go in the penalty. 2.45 left to go in the game. Now the play comes back here to Paul Schmier. Long shot, an easy shot. It's turned aside by Trechak. Now the play is out to the blue line, and it's offside as Walt has dumped it in. And McGregor thought he could sneak it out before the official could see it, but of course the official saw it. Bruce McGregor, McGregor dumps it in, 2.27 left to go in the hockey game. The question is, will they play Kitty Barton? Here's McGregor intercepted, right out of front. Oh, 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 and Petschak grabs it. Henderson was wide open on the left side, but the puck didn't come off uh, his stick at a good angle, and he couldn't reach it. Well, when he moved it from his forehand to his backhand to get it to, uh, over to Henderson, it started to roll, and he just couldn't get it on his stick. Hey, would you believe? Would you think it's possible if we do get the winning goal, Henderson? Well, he got the 3-2, the 4-3, the 6-5 two years ago. Well, it's been two years ago. McGregor's interception. There he are. He tried to take it to his backhand so he could get it through to... Ah. That'll be an offside if it's touched. Henderson touches it. You know, somebody who has not been given much credit here tonight, and I think is playing a whale of a game, is Paul Smear. You know, he's a 28-year-old uh, with Cleveland. By the way, he comes from Cutworth, Saskatchewan. I just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> Played with Vancouver in the Western League, with Dallas, Chicago, Dallas, Portland, Dallas, and then finally Chicago for two years. And now with Cleveland. Now Whitey Stapleton feeds it to Johnny McKenzie. McKenzie loses it. But he got back in a hurry to make sure he couldn't uh, lose it to a Soviet player. Now it's Stapleton ahead to Bobby Hall. J.C. Trombley dumps it out to the line to McKenzie. McKenzie, it's offside. Vasiliev took it in. The Russian player trapped in over the line. A team logo we've had... Uh, People are wondering where that team logo came from. It's an interesting story. Johnny McKenzie racing down that right side. He got Lacroix in front of the net. And the shot never quite came to him. McKenzie has it again. Out in front. And Bobby Hall was being too well tied up by Liapkin. It's hailed in by Whitey Stapleton. Back out now to Liapkin. Liapkin's long shot turned aside by Jerry Cheevers. A minute 33 left to go. Here come the Canadians, led up here now by Lacroix. On the right side is Johnny McKenzie, looking for that drop. Puts it out in front of Lacroix, couldn't quite get to it. Andre Lacroix feeds it back to Bobby Hall. Hull for Lacroix. Sigenkov has it. Sigenkov is hit there by Johnny McKenzie. Oh, he got out of the way just in time. Here it is in front of that uh, Soviet zone. The Soviet player lost his uh, glove on the play as he was hit. Here they come up to that line. It's Malta. He's out of the play. He's back with Johnny McKenzie. He clears out the center with a minute to go. Back out to the blue line. It's Kapustin. Kapustin. And they clear it. Out to the line, but not over. As Whitey Stapleton broke his stick, and he was playing without it. Naturally. He goes for a new one. Here we go with Gordy Howe. Out in front. Back to Hoblich. He shoots. Oh! Missed the open net. Gordy Howe set him up beautifully. Tretchak went down, and the hobble is shot wide. I believe he got in a little too close. Now watch this play here. See that two-hander? Howe took the Russian off the puck, give it to Mahovlich, made the deep, got in a little too close, and just caught Tretchak's shoulder and bounced off to the side. Well, whatever happens, get ready for games. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Johnny, this club can't do anything but get better. 
Right. So many times I've seen the Russians pull away. I thought they were a tough, strong checking hockey team. They've turned off that puck. 36 seconds left to go in the hockey game. As Ralph Backstrom, the draw comes back over to Mihailov. Mihailov feeds it to center to Petrov. Trying to feed that breakaway pass to Harlamov, but it's no good. I was J.C. Trombley. Back out to Backstrom. Backstrom on the left side. Here goes Mahavlich. Mahavlich has it knocked off of his stick. Back over here to Gordy Howe. Howe to Mahavlich. Cleared out to center with 16 seconds to go. Now it's Mahavlich winding up on the right side. Over there to Backstrom. Gordy Howe takes it away from him. Howe carries it inside the zone. With one hand, he knocked it in. Five seconds to go. And he takes a run at Gusev. And the buzzer goes. It's all over. Just an unbelievable hockey game. down there mobbing Jerry Cheevers for the game he played. The Russians mobbing Zlatislav Trechak, who made some sensational saves. And the teams in the traditional handshake at center ice, they get a standing ovation from the crowd here in the Quebec Palisade. And it's, I don't know how the panel of judges is going to pick it up. Canada outshot the Soviets 34 to 28. Johnny, how lucky are we? We have seven more like that coming. <laughs> the final score, Canada three and the Soviets three. This is game one from Quebec City. Mesdames et messieurs, Jack Cameron, ancien gardien de but de l'équipe olympique canadienne, version 1924, va maintenant présenter deux ensembles de la première série de monnaie olympique aux joueurs canadiens et aux joueurs soviétiques, choisis par un panel d'éditorialistes sportifs canadiens et soviétiques comme ayant été le plus utile à son équipe au cours de cette partie. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Cameron, who was the goaltender for the 1944 Canadian Olympic team, will now present two mint-proof sets of Olympic coins to the Canadian and Soviet players selected by a panel of Canadian and Soviet sports writers and broadcasters as being the most valuable players in this game. For l'équipe soviétique, for the Soviet national team, le numéro 17, the number 17, Valery Molomov. Et pour le Team Canada 74, et pour Team Canada 74, le numéro 16, le numéro 16, Babu Hayes. Stars of this game number one of the Summit Series. And on my immediate right, the star of the Soviet Union, Valery Harmalov. Uh, Valery, congratulations on a great individual goal. I'm wondering, did this uh, Canadian Team 74 surprise you any? Поздравляю вас, Валерий, с замечательным голом, который вы забили. И что вы можете сказать, чем вас удивила эта новая команда, новая по сравнению с то, что вы встречались в 72 году? Ну, она, во-первых, удивила тем, что очень корректная команда. Surprised us uh, because it played correctly. Uh, I'm interested also if this team, in his consideration after one game, is better than 72 Canada. Что можете сказать по первому матчу? Эта команда лучше выглядит, чем предыдущая команда. Но мы прошлую команду мы очень боялись. We were a little bit scared of the uh, 32 team. А эта команда лучше нас узнала, поэтому с ней труднее играть. But this team used to know us better, and therefore it was more difficult to play against them. Do you think that we're going to have all close games like this, Valerie? Как вы думаете, они в дальнейшем будут так же хорошо играть? Я думаю, еще лучше, наверное, будут. Well, I think they will be they will be playing ever more, ever better. Valerie, congratulations again. Best of luck in the series. And Igor, thank you very much. Еще раз большое вам спасибо и желаю вам удачи в дальнейшем. Thank you. And now the Golden Jet, Bobby Hull of Canada. Bobby, congratulations on an outstanding performance. I know you've waited a long time to play in one of these. Two goals and one assist. You've got to be thrilled. I certainly am. I, I just, I still have all the respect in the world for that Soviet team. They're terrific, although 
uh, you know, our team played so darn well tonight. We just had a little sag when we had our penalties. Uh, we had a couple of bad penalties, and that's where they won the game on us. But, but they're a game group of athletes. They're great skaters, and they play the game the way it should be played. And Trechak put on a fine show in the lead going. He certainly did. He's a great goaltender. He stands there. He challenges the shooter. As you saw when Frank walked in, I, I had it notched up. Uh, Frank doesn't very often miss, but... But uh, Tradiac stayed with him and moved across the net with him and didn't give Frank any place to shoot when he went by him. Bobby, did they do anything that surprised you for the preparation of watching videotape? Now, I saw them practice over there, and I saw them do everything well. They skate well, they move the puck well, and they're deadly on power plays, and we're just going to have to get fewer and fewer penalties. And the answer, of course, I guess, is just skate, 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 and stay out of the penalty box. You, you have to stay out of the penalty box, and you have to stay with them. You can get caught in their end. If you notice, very seldom tonight did we get caught where our defensemen were just three on two. We always had one guy at least coming back, and that's the way we had to play him. Bobby, I want to see also, in addition to your two goals, I thought your passing was just superlative. Oh, I think we'll get better. Uh, you know, that was, everybody was so tight. I was so tight for the first two periods, I couldn't handle a puck. I went to get a pass over here in the first period, and it was just like so. And, and I think as the series goes, we'll, we'll loosen up, and we'll uh, get in better condition, and I think we can play better. Bobby, I've seen your curve stick. They have curve sticks with a bigger hook. Oh, yes, they do. I was noticing that over there. I was just wondering if they were going to put any rules out to limit their curve, but they've got curves just as big as mine. Bob, congratulations. Best of luck in Toronto. Thank you very much. Bobby Hall, the Golden Jet, as Canada plays to a 3-3 tie with the Soviet Union.